Hello everybody, Avid Assistant here and welcome to another video and welcome to 2025. Now some of you will have seen the video that I made a while back looking at various setups for remote working, uh, including listing my favourite which consisted of a remote playout solution called Looper, as well as a remote sync box that allows me to work with local media, as well as syncing with others in various remote locations allowing for Nexus features like project sharing and bin locking regardless of where you and your team are from each other. Now, since I've already done a video on Looper, although they did just drop a bunch of new features, so I might have to do another video on that soon, let's take a look at that SyncBox solution, specifically the HireWorks Connect Box. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen my remote working video or otherwise haven't heard of the sync boxes, here's the scoop. Essentially, they're a form of network attached storage uh, in a form factor similar to that of a RAID array, usually with around four drive bays. This provides the responsiveness and the dependability of working locally uh, on your own system, so you're not remote controlling an Avid and worrying about sync lag or your peripherals not quite working, translating through the, the, the remote software or anything like that. You're working locally, along with having all of the perks of an Avid Nexus setup that you'd find in a facility, meaning uh, custom workspaces, uh, bin locking, project sharing, all of that good stuff. But with the best part being that each user on this shared workspace can be based essentially anywhere. Which I do mean literally, because quite recently I was on a long form project. Um, there was three of us in editorial, uh, one of us based in London, one of us based on the west coast of Ireland, and myself uh, based in the west of Scotland. And we were all able to work perfectly fine live together with bin locking and everything, sharing sequences, and it wasn't an issue. And this magical part of the solution is achieved by having each of these local boxes attached to your home router via a ethernet cable. Then some custom software keeps all of these boxes in sync um, with each other at all times, um, including maintaining .lock files for bin locking, mimicking a Nexus storage as far as Media Composer is concerned. Now currently, as far as I know, there is two companies offering this solution at scale properly to the industry at a high-end level. And both of these are kit rental companies based in and around London and the UK. Uh, the first being Salon Rentals, with their uh, commonly referred to as Salon Sync Box, and the second is Hireworks with their Hireworks Connect Boxes. Now, since this is the solution that I happen to have right next to me here, and it is the uh, solution that the productions I happen to have been on have most often used, um, that's the one that we're going to be looking at today. Not to mention that John Lawrence over at Hireworks is an absolute legend and has even sent me a couple of their newer boxes with some of their upgraded features for me to test and show off in this video. So thanks again, John. But before we get to those, let's take a look at the very simple setup of these boxes. Now for the editorial team, the setup for all of this actually begins before any of these boxes are even shipped, which is when uh, you'll be in touch with Hireworks and specify exactly what you want your workspaces to be. This is essentially exactly the same process that a first assistant would do um, at the beginning when setting up the Avid Nexus environment. Um, so you would set, you know, several workspaces, um, something like uh, one for projects, um, one for your brushes or media, all, all the shoot media. You'll likely set up one for renders, since we want those to go somewhere separate. We don't need to copy those uh, off elsewhere or really maintain them. And you'll probably also want a, you know, a general working space you know this will be for everything from exports to stuff that you're importing and ingesting collecting media um, keeping continuity pa paperwork stuff like that now shortly after you've provided this information to hireworks the first boxes will be shipped out and when it arrives to you it will arrive in a pelly case a little bit like this one open it up and you will find the box itself a couple of ethernet cables a power cable and a one sheet laminated instruction page to get it all set up, simply find a spot for it at your desk, plug it in for power, connect an ethernet into the Avid port and the other end of that cable into your computer, then connect the other ethernet cable into the internet port and the other end of that one into your router. And it's at this point that I will point out, if you only have one ethernet port on your machine, you won't be able to use it for internet purposes while this box is connected. Two solutions to this would be to either use an adapter to enable a second ethernet connection, so say something like a, like a USB a adapter, um, USB to ethernet adapter, like, like this one here for example, uh, or simply to use Wi-Fi. And since my router is right next to my computer, 
um, and they're both fairly modern. We're using Wi-Fi 7. I'm just going to go with that. Now, once you're all plugged in, go ahead and power on the box. Then open up a browser and type 10.10.10.10 and you will be directed to download the installer for the HireWorks Connect app. Go ahead and get that installed. Once you've done that, launch the app and enter the activation code that will have been sent to you by HireWorks ahead of time in order to activate the box and tie it to your production. This is a security step that is just essential to ensure that this box has gotten into the right hands. Now, if you haven't received this code, check your spam folders in your email just in case it's went there, or otherwise flick an email to HireWorks and they will sort you out very quickly. Their customer service team is absolutely fantastic, very responsive, even after hours. They are very, very good. Once that's entered, you'll be prompted to create a password for the app. Now, you won't have to use this every single time you launch it, like at the beginning of every day. You can just launch a computer um, and you know get right to it but if you have say turned the box off or restarted it or if you're on two projects and you've plugged in another box to use that for a while now you've plugged back into this one uh, you will be prompted for your password uh, when you do that and unlike the activation code this password is set per user so this is very important to note because if you for any reason leave the project and someone else is hired to take your place, say you know, um, you, you've committed to another job, you're the first assistant, you've done six months, whatever, and they've had to bring in a new first, um, you will need to pass on uh, this password for them to be able to use the box. But once you've decided on a password and you've got that entered, voila, you are now in the Connect app interface. Now the Connect app is wonderfully simple and well laid out. On our workspaces page, we can see all of our workspaces listed, the file path and their sync status with the other boxes. I'm the only one using this project right now, so that's why it just says standalone at the end here. Um, otherwise it would say up to date or you would get a progress bar um, showing its current sync status in terms of pulling you know, uh, newer data from the other boxes to your box. But I can just right click on these selected drives here and mount the workspace. We could mount these as a read only if you wanted to set up one of these, say for um, a producer or like a uh, post producer or someone to come on and use an Avid strictly for viewing. They would always be kept up to date with the latest media, but they would not be able to change anything or write to the drives, but they would be able to look at what's there. And of course, we can set these to auto mount uh, when we initially log into the box. Um, I could pause these selected workspaces if I wanted to. So stop the syncing essentially, say if I really needed the bandwidth for something, um, then I could pause that just now if I was doing you know, a sensitive upload or something like that. Um, but I don't need to do that just now. So I'm going to resume all, all these workspaces. Just make sure that they all stay up to date. You can also see that down the bottom of the interface, we can also get some other readouts, such as uh, how many boxes are currently connected to the project, like how many are currently online and connected. And we can also see, you know, if the box is currently syncing media, what its current upload and download speeds uh, are. And since this is Ethernet wired straight into your router, I have found that it generally will max out whatever your current um, internet speed is. And well, I wouldn't say that you have to have the fastest internet and speed in the world for this to work. And you know, I've collaborated with some people in editorial teams who had like a, a max network speed of about 10, 12 megabits per second, and everything worked perfectly fine. We would just sync the rushes, um, you know, essentially overnight from the assistant, and then bin locking and those kinds of you know small files that need exchanged were very fast and we never had an issue there. Though I would say, of course, it definitely helps if you're, you know, say your AE is remote and ingesting large amounts of material, like very big shoot days, for example, and you want to sync this across as soon as possible. You don't want to be waiting for it. The faster everybody's internet speed is, obviously the, the upload speed from the, the person doing the ingesting and the download speed from everyone else, the better. Fun fact, actually, when I was buying my uh, house here in Scotland, a massive factor into where we settled was availability of fiber optic internet. <laughs> now, getting back to the interface, you can also see at the top right, we have the storage space available um, in our box. If this is something that you want, wish to monitor closely, uh, the box I have for testing in this video has around 20 terabytes available and you can get up to 40 terabytes, I believe, in one box if needed. Using Avid Media, um, like as in DNX proxy transcoded media, which is very much the standard, uh, on almost any long form project, this should absolutely be plenty. I've recently completed work on a feature film 
and I think we got to 2.7 terabytes by the end used out of you know the the 20 so um you know it definitely offers plenty of storage <laughs> flicking through the rest of the tabs in the interface uh, first up we have the network tab showing us all the connect boxes currently attached to this project and their sync status so you may be up to date say like you may have all the the, the latest media if you've done all the ingesting um, but others might still be pu pulling data from you for example and you can monitor that progress here and then you can say tell the editor say when they're fully up to date and you're like oh yeah all that media is now synced across all those dailies you should be able to access it now you can monitor that at your end and then tell them when it's ready Next up is the My Connect tab, which is mostly showing technical data on the box, as well as you giving you the option to power off or restart the box if needed. Then we have the uh, Activity tab, which is showing you the current files currently being synced and their status. Um, it will even show you sort of the current status of like uh, Avid bins being synced um, and which, which user is currently accessing them and, and syncing them and stuff like that. Then lastly, we have the About tab, which is credits to the designers, the technology used, as well as contact info for higher works in case you ever need them. Now, the performance of the boxes works perfectly well for offline. You know, these are essentially a RAID array with four drives all working together. So you're, you're getting very fast storage. In fact, it's maxing out the one gigabit Ethernet um, bandwidth that you're getting in the standard boxes. Here you can see me browsing through a project from an edit stock practice uh, edit that I'm currently working on. Um, you know, the, the material is 1080p DNX HD LB, so the absolute standard that most edits are done at. Uh, playback, renders, effects, um, all of that is 100% solid. With the, the dual Ethernet connection, you know, one direct to the computer and one direct to the in internet, allowing for full direct transfer speeds to the computer as well as full access to the internet for syncing. I'll take this opportunity as well to remind all viewers of the channel that they can take advantage of a fantastic discount to edit stock um, by going to editstock.com slash the avid assistant. The discount will allow you to reduce price on the already really affordable packages of uh, full rushes for various professional short films for you to practice your editing with. Heck, they even come with all of the original paperwork like scripts, continuity reports. So it is the absolute ideal, perfect way to practice um, editing in between jobs or if you're a student or a graduate or really anybody who's just looking to practice a little editing. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, head over to that URL to grab your discount. Support. Now I did mention though that with that edit stop project I'm using 1080p DNX HDLB proxies or DNX 36 of which yes well is the standard. I have uh, assisted and you know in my own editing projects used uh, higher rates of DNX Set on several occasions, as well as opted for not going for 1080p but maintaining the source resolution in my transcodes and going for DNX HR material for my proxies, for example. And if this is a way that you prefer to work, you know, you like using that higher end material for whatever reason, you know, say you really need that higher data rate or you want to maintain the source resolution, Hireworks has you covered with their newer boxes which offer two and a half gig Ethernet ports as opposed to the standard one gig E connection. I've connected both these boxes to my machine and ran. Blackmagic's disk speed test to highlight the difference, which you can see here in the raw speed test results. And here you can see me doing the same sort of demonstration, playing around in a copy of the Treasurer short film that I've demonstrated many times on this channel, um, where uh, all of the uh, material that I'm working with is uh, source 4K resolution in DNX HR codec. And I'm able to play it back, render it, export all that stuff without without an issue. Not to mention as well that that two and a half gig E direct connection to your computer would allow for much faster transfer speeds from other drives to the box and vice versa. So uh, say if you were copying files to and from another drive, uh, like for example, uh, offloading rushes from the DIT shuttle drive when they've, they've like delivered the rushes to you as a runner, for example, and you're copying them onto your um, higher works box, it would be significantly faster uh, with this upgraded model. The newer boxes come in a sleek new form factor with two variations as well. Uh, the first one is using mechanical drives, well, whereas the other one is using SSDs. Both of them essentially offer the exact same performance, like raw performance, but the SSD option is absolutely silent. And this is something that I very much underappreciated at first, uh, like when it was described to me, but when I got it in the room and I was doing my testing, 
um, it made a massive difference to me because uh, at home I don't have the same kind of very nice speaker setup that I would have uh, in a post facility in a proper edit suite. And so to have this uh, box that's, you know, giving me all of that uh, fantastic performance, but being absolutely silent, whisper quiet, I can't hear any fans, I can't hear anything from it. Um, it's very much appreciated actually when you're watching down the cut. Now hopefully you are all starting to see the appeal of these connect boxes. It is an incredibly versatile piece of kit allowing for full editorial remote collaboration or even hybrid working. You know just imagine a team of editors and assistants all working together in person like in the same building um, but say one member of the team um, wants to work from home one day or they want to go and visit their parents or whatever um, they, they can't come into the office for a few days, but they want to keep working. They simply unplug their box um, we're from their workstation um, in the, the collaboration environment Take it home with them and then they can work from home And then when you want to work back together again in person, you just unplug the box bring it back in plug it back in and then you're all working together again they they are not exclusively a you know remote home working uh, solution. You could all be uh, together um, and have a box, um, but it allows that absolutely versatile mobile portable um, freedom um, to work where you like, back and forth, or even taking the same material and going back and forth working from set. Um, you could take a couple of these boxes for an editor and an assistant, go to the studio. The, uh, the editorial team work right there next to them and then take those boxes when they're done shooting to, to where you're going to be doing the editing um, and you just continue with the exact same physical solution uh, working together um, very, very easily. Uh, it really is an ideal setup for productions that want that kind of freedom. So for any viewers who are film and TV professionals who are keen to use this on your next project, I've left contact details for Hireworks and a link to their website in the video description. Just pass this on to your production so that you can get in touch and arrange to supply your next project with this incredible working solution. I genuinely cannot recommend this enough. I have used it on three or four different projects now and it works like a dream. It's enabled me to work on London-based projects from my home in the west of Scotland. Um, and also huge thanks and props again to John Lawrence at Hireworks for sending me his newer boxes to have a play around with and for all his you know incredible very fast and very helpful customer service um, over the years on the various projects. Um, it really always does impress me every time how even if I email uh, late at night if I'm working on a cut and then you know, I, I forgot my password or I, I need to set up a new box and I need the activation code or something like that. They are always incredibly quick to reply and very, very helpful. They are a fantastic team over there. So thanks again, John, to you and your team at Highworks. And massive thanks to all of you lovely viewers for watching another video. Uh, especially thank you to uh, YouTube members and Patreon subscribers. Um, I hope you've all found this video uh, insightful and as always any suggestions you have for future videos or any type of content um, please just comment it down below and I'll get right on it. I'm aiming to be a lot more regular with my videos this year after a pretty turbulent 2024 so stay tuned for more of these videos coming at you really soon and until then that is me for today so all the best for all your projects guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!